what's up everyone welcome back to the channel it's your girl colors and i'm back with another video and today's video is gonna be my first ever bump date for baby number two let's process that let's take a minute because i am still wrapping my head around this um because it's it's still huge news I have actually had two doctor's appointments so far and now baby has grown so much. I'll be talking about that more in a separate bump date because I know everyone has been asking me like, girl, how far along are you? Uh, when is your due date? Yada, yada, yada. So let me just go ahead and tell you guys and spill the tea. So your girl is actually 12 weeks and two days. So I am three months pregnant. I know I have been knowing this for a little minute now. And that's why your girl been MIA. And I know even from my live stream, people be like, when do you want to have baby number two? Now listen, okay, when I said I just can't, when y'all would ask me and I'm like, I don't know, I, I just can't. That's because I can't because I just, I, I wasn't ready because I was just, I was going through it. I just, I still can't. So I wasn't lying, girl. I wasn't lying. I just, I, we, we, kids are a blessing. We know this. And I cried many years to get my first one. Now I'm not going to regret the second one. All I'm saying is I need a minute, but I have had time to honestly process it. And I have come to terms with it. And also a lot of people have been asking about David's reaction. A video will be coming out about that soon. So stay on the lookout for that. But going back to what I was saying, as far as the due date, the due date, is a crazy story and i'll break that down a little bit later but the due date itself is actually march 7th now if you have been following me for the whole journey at least for baby girl nala you would know that her due date was actually march 8th so even though she was born in february she was early that was her due date so technically this baby and nala have the same exact due date I actually conceived both babies on June 1st. So now I know when it's time to have some more kids or the month of June come around, there will be no vagina, all right? There will be no smashing, no touching. I don't even want David looking at me because we cannot have a situation of three under three. It is not happening. I'm allergic to it. It just, it just no. My doctor have already asked me if I want to have that little surgery, the little thing to put up in your own um, cervix. Yep, already six weeks setting that up. I don't care. I know people can say, oh, take birth control. I don't want to do all that because I already miss, um, mess up now in situations where I'm forgetting to take pills. And we don't need no mistakes because it's just me and David. And I don't know if I had the mental capacity to have three other three. I'm just saying. So we are not saying that we are not going to be having more kids. All we say, we just need a little bit of space. Anyway, that's enough rambling. Uh, I know you guys are here for the bump date. So how this video is gonna go is a lot of the symptoms are, are honestly the same outside of week eight. So I'm gonna be putting week six through 11 in this one bump date because there's not much difference outside of cravings. Uh, and week eight was my first uh, doctor's appointment. So that will have a little bit more details. So when I'm talking about the symptoms I am experiencing, I'm just gonna talk about it as throughout that whole weeks instead of just saying week six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Because honestly when I look back at my notes every single week, they all look perfectly the same for the most part. So just know that if you have a question as far as did I experience the same thing through the same week, maybe there's something I'm honestly forgetting or was it significant enough, then just comment down below and I'll tell you the best way I can. But in future bump dates, I'm gonna try my best to do a comparison of when I was pregnant with Nala and this time so that it could just be a little bit of difference. I am not gonna be doing any measurements in this video, although I will be giving a sneak peek of my belly because it's not fair to put in this video because I am not those weeks along if that makes sense. Enough of rambling, let's get to the first symptom. First thing 
things that I have noticed very much in the beginning of this whole pregnancy as a symptom is that I had a nose on me. I remember definitely experienced that um, a little bit later on when I was pregnant with Nala. I think it was like week eight when I started experiencing having a nose. But I remember coming home from work one day and I was sitting next to David on the couch, but I have like these uh, masculine Bath and Body Works candles sitting on top of my entertainment. And the thing is, is that none of the masculine candles that I own is not lit. I don't like them very much. Honestly, I don't even know why I keep buying Bath and Body Works candles and I barely burn them. But I was sitting on the couch and I was just like, it smells like a guy, like a, a good a good cologne. And I looked at David and I'm like, he don't have on no cologne, he just got a work child. And he was like, mm, I don't smell it. And I think this happened like a couple days in a row and David was like, yep, you definitely pregnant because you smelling all these things. But yeah, definitely my sense of smell was one major symptom I definitely noticed. The next symptom I had experienced during earlier in my pregnancy was exhaustion. Oh my god. When I say exhausted, it's like I feel like I've been like working all day in the sun. And at this time, honestly, I don't even think I was working. Was I working? I was working, but I was only doing half days. Oh yeah, so what was crazy is I was only working five hours a day, definitely in the beginning. I was very tired and I'm like, why am I so tired? And I was even struggling at work, only doing five hours a day until the point to where I was taking naps every day. And that was kind of my first little inkling like, girl. Because I remember when I was pregnant with Nala, I was taking a lot of naps. And I am not a nap person at all. I don't like going to sleep. I'm usually the person that's fighting sleep. That was a, a big thing. And honestly, if you are a person who's probably trying to tell if you are pregnant or looking for symptoms, I say for me personally, some of the biggest ones was probably uh, me taking naps or being very exhausted or even lazy or um, being, and this is gonna be my third thing, is emotional. <laughs> I feel like my hormones just hit like a skyrocket. Like I get like very sad and I don't know why it is. And if you look back when I found out I was pregnant with um, Nala, fun fact, um, the day that I actually went to the doctor for Nala, and find out I was pregnant was the same day of my first appointment with this baby, so that's funny. But yeah, when I found out that I was pregnant, girl, I was crying all over the place, or even before that, I was crying over stuff, stress or whatnot. I was just very like tearful towards the end, and my hormones are just like ridiculous but i noticed that i get very overwhelmed very sad like stuff that usually wouldn't bother me as much definitely bothers me i notice when i am pregnant the next thing that i noticed that was the symptoms throughout those weeks was that i started to get boob soreness and i was kind of not really sure with this symptom because um, if you don't know, I was definitely trying to, and still am, trying to dry up my breast milk. I stopped breastfeeding and it's been probably like a month now since I actually pumped, thank God. I really feel blessed that I had the opportunity to even pump, but um, yeah dog, it's a no for me. <laughs> That was terrible. So I definitely wasn't feeling engorged, but one day I just started getting those pains again. And I was just kind of like, what's the problem? Like this milk is not going away. But yeah, boob, uh, swellingness, tenderness, um, soreness definitely was one of the things that I noticed. Um, but I just thought it was just my milk situation being a little funny, but obviously it's being a little funny because your girl was pregnant and was trying to create milk when I'm trying to get rid of it. Now, I'm very curious on how this process is gonna be. I definitely do not expect to breastfeed or pump 
this baby that's coming so i don't know how it's gonna be trying to get rid of my milk while i am pregnant to be continue on that but i still definitely think i have milk in there because i pinched my nipple the other day and there was like a, a drop of milk and i was just like all right but my doctor did definitely tell me that i cannot be breastfeeding no more anyway because of my whole cervical weirdness going on so one of the biggest symptoms I have noticed in the whole probably up until week nine was that I have been extremely sick. A lot of people think that I am way better than I was with Nala. And in a sense it's true only because of the medicine I've been prescribed this time, but we'll get into that when I get into my week eight. But um, I was extremely sick living on the toilet. I would even keep bubble scrub bleach cleaner for the toilet and like a rag next to um, the toilet so that when I'm getting ready to throw up that I can hurry up, throw a dash of that in, <laughs> in the toilet so it can smell good and be clean and then I can properly throw up and then clean myself up. It was to the point to where I was like throwing up three times a day. About time week eight came around, I think I lost about 13 pounds. The total weight loss so far has been 16 pounds. Um, it's fluctuating at this point because life is going a little bit better than me than it was before. So I guess in a sense it is a little bit better than what's now because I didn't stop being sick, sick until around six months of pregnancy. I am three months now, but throughout that whole six to 11, I definitely was battling with sickness. Next thing going along with that is a loss of appetite. So like I said, I did lose roughly around 14 pounds, but it got to, it gets to the point to where even now I still have this problem to where I would probably only really eat one to maybe two times a day. Maybe I eat one meal and then a snack. Find that for whatever reason, I'm not really into certain like juices. I'm definitely not really into sweets, even though I really want to be. One of the things I was kind of like my savior in the whole situation because I haven't had an appetite, it definitely was the icy push-up pop. I think the only place you can get those from is Sam's Club, but um, yeah, that's definitely another one going alongside of being sick. Another symptom that I noticed mainly only in the first six and seven weeks is that I was getting a lot of random bloody noses in the middle of the night. That is something very common for a pregnant woman in the beginning of their pregnancy because you are getting a lot more blood that you need to pump to your baby. So I was mostly at night getting these random nosebleeds. They wasn't lasting very long to be honest. I probably could just blow my nose really quickly, stuff some tissue up there just for like five minutes and be really good. But that probably happened to me about six or seven times. Another thing that I noticed in my earlier weeks was a symptom that happened was that um, that issue, oh, that terrible issue that I was having with the weird mustiness that I guess some women get when they are pregnant, that definitely happened to me in the first like two or three weeks and Thank God it's not an issue. I honestly felt it lasted a lot longer with Nala, but oh my God, I have to buy like a special deodorant. And honestly, that wouldn't 100% help it. So I was like going through situations where I was wearing uh, hoodies and jackets all the time just to try to mask the smell. It doesn't matter if you're like taking showers, putting on deodorant, please don't put on a lot of perfume because that's just not gonna help. I noticed that I was getting that thing back to where that wasn't helping with my sickness because I was honestly making myself sick. But yeah, that definitely came back and I'm so glad it's gone because no one got time to be funky and people don't know that you're pregnant because you're a lot early in your pregnancy. So you can't be like, oh, I'm musty because I'm pregnant. Like that's not a common thing you hear, but it's definitely a thing. So 
All right, so let's get into some of the, I guess, foods and things that kind of help me survive, like the pregnancy survival kit of those whole weeks, and then we'll get into week eight, and then we'll kind of move on from there. So my survival food was, like I said, the push pops. The Gatorade, for honestly, for some reason, did not help me as well as the ginger beer. I did not take ginger beer the first time around, but this time I had it maybe the first week. It helped me a little bit as well as the ginger ale. Um, and the uh, Ensure was a no-go this time. And I feel like that is the main thing I would recommend someone to help them basically survive, but none of that worked. The only thing that worked was pineapples, apples, grapes, and the push-up pop. And that was literally it for those couple of weeks. Um, orange juice helped for a little bit, but honestly, that was my only survival kit. Now, kind of going into week eight, week eight was the most eventful out of everything because it's the first time we actually got to see the baby and see the heartbeat. I actually did record that video of week eight appointment, so that will be coming out very soon. But baby is doing fine. Uh, he or she is very healthy. The heartbeat was around 158, and we got our first ultrasound picture, which is the the one you will see in the thumbnail but I can show you again and that is baby right there with the uh, feet in the umbilical cord attached I honestly feel that baby is a lot bigger than Nala was around this time so I, de I definitely think this baby will be bigger than Nala at birth but you know things could change as time progress I got my labs done I don't know what that is for but um, maybe they was checking like HCG levels if it's continuing to rise or something like that uh, I got prescribed dyclectic diclegic whatever it's a nausea medicine that did not absolutely work for me the first time around and this time around, it has been my lifesaver. I got it prescribed to me at eight weeks, but I honestly didn't start taking it until nine weeks, and that was a regret. I definitely should have taken it, ordered it just like David advised me to, but I was being stubborn because I thought I knew myself, but apparently I don't. It definitely didn't work this time. I take two pills every night before I go to bed on an empty stomach, and that works good enough to get me through the day. That was definitely week eight. Um, I think at that point, I had lost definitely 16 pounds. My starting weight this pregnancy is 180, I was 188. So I was about two pounds heavier than I was when I um, conceived Nala. Now I am 174. So that means that I kind of fluctuate between 14 and 16 pounds at this point. So yeah, I think that's gonna be all for the symptom portions. One thing that I always like to do is to go into the pregnancy app and read some of the things that's supposed to happen during those times. I'm just gonna pick out some of the important things from each week so that I'm not here rambling too long. And I'm not gonna forget to show you guys that's what my baby bump is looking like at this point going into the weeks the pregnancy app that I actually use is pregnancy plus if you are wondering in week six your little one is now has two chambers heart basically looks like a tube it's twisted on amongst itself at this point in week six the baby is the size of a grain of rice which is extremely tiny basically at this point the baby's spinal cord is beginning to form it is now the shape of a tadpole so yeah that's week six week seven it says your baby is the size of a blueberry uh, the brain is developing fast making your baby head much larger than a portion of the body which that's kind of what it looks like for the most part cartilage is beginning to form leg buds which is um, develop is strong bones and the kidneys are developing your baby's eyes are visual at this point and week eight it says at this point baby is starting to look like a baby your baby is the size of a raspberry arms and legs are continue to develop and the structure of the eye is beginning to form and at this point the baby eye color is definitely determined week nine it says that the reproductive organs will either be 
begin. Baby is the size of a grape. Baby is beginning to move around in the ambiotic fluids. Oh, I got to see that today and it was so touching. Baby's two chambers have grown into four at this point, so babies definitely have grown. Um, week 10, it says, says that it goes from being like an embryo to a fetus officially, so that is informative. Kidneys, liver, brain, and lungs are beginning to function. The heart is mostly fully developed. Your baby head is now half the size of its body, and the little tail has that made him resemble a tadpole starting to disappear appear you can hear the heartbeat with the doppler at this point and the last week it says that the baby is now the size of a fig i don't know what a fig is ain't it look don't it look like wheat i don't know it's busy moving around the side of you inside of your uterus this week is beginning of three week period when your baby will double in size and will go through a growth spur oh and fingernails are beginning to form and basically the head size is getting pretty normal to the size of its body so that is everything as far as everything that should be happening hopefully um that's the last time i have to do that many in a row because that's just a lot of talking <laughs> but um let's just go ahead and show you guys my little baby bump so far all right so now that i got shorts on this is what baby is looking like so far it's not crazy different but I think honestly it's like shape wise you can tell like something's happening especially if I just got finished eating or something I definitely look pregnant uh, usually my waist is a little bit more accentuated in this and now it's like all right something's happening around here so that is pretty much the glimpse of Baby, I'm getting a flat back and losing my butt again, so that's always fun. So yeah, to answer this question in advance, so I'm not really sure if you're gonna be finding out early sex or gender uh, of the baby, but it will happen around 19 or 20 weeks that we will get the information or the scan. But I definitely want to take a moment out to say thank you to all my new subscribers that came from my announcement video. I really do appreciate that. I appreciate the love and thank you guys because, you know, I really didn't expect that. Um, this is also a new journey for me to go from infertility to go to having two kids under two. It's a blessing at the end of the day and I really do appreciate all the love and support on this journey so we are just about to go for a whole nother ride honey so stay tuned i'll be posting the next video hopefully soon in the next couple of days but yeah i really appreciate you guys uh, if you haven't already just make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next one